girl. Welcome to a rather damp commencement ceremony for West Hills graduating class of 2011. <laughs> My name is Michael Von Wald. I'm an English teacher here at West Hill, and I will be your master of ceremonies for today. Please rise for the presentation of colors by JROTC Color Guard Commander Sergeant First Class Cedric Nogares, and the national anthem sung by the West Hill Chamber Singers.
It is my pleasure to call senior class president Anika Advani to address the graduating class. You may all be seated. Before I begin, I'd like to have a moment of silence to remember our classmate, Danny Valeda, who passed away in 2009 and would have graduated with us today. Thank you. Good afternoon, parents, family, students, and staff. Over the past few days, I've tried to tell myself that I'm graduating that my last day of high school was long gone, that today, Thursday, June 23rd, I will officially be a graduate of Westall High School. And finally, here I stand at this podium before you in my graduation attire at this commencement ceremony, still in shock and awe, trying to comprehend that four years of high school are over, that senior year has ended, that we are formally going to become the class of 2011 within the hour. We've done this all before, all of us. We have graduated from middle school, and now we are present as graduates of West Hill High School, about to embark on a new adventure onto the rest of our lives. Four years went by in a swift instant, morphing and shaping our personalities, our friendships, our minds. These four years were an aggregate of highs and lows, challenges and obstacles, successes and defeats. It was a journey that was difficult, yet still enjoyable in many ways. We faced pride when West Hill athletic teams accomplished incredible feats, faced hardship when finances were tight, faced joy when we received an A in a class, and faced sadness when our friends seemed distant. It has been an extraordinary journey. Each one of us has our own stories to tell, our own pictures to paint, and our own memories to cherish when we reminisce about our high school experiences. We changed from middle school to high school, and no doubt we will continue to change from high school to college or to wherever we are headed next. That change that occurred within each of us was gradual. It took time for us to become the people we are today and for us to adapt and adjust to the high school environment. Now we must again adjust as we take the next step forward. We will go to college or we will start our careers and along the way be faced with new people, new situations and new environments. There is no doubt that it will be scary and difficult at times. However, there is one thing that has helped me through strenuous circumstances that I would like to share with all of you. There is one conversation in my life that I will always remember. It was with a man named Eugene Kranz, the NASA flight director and Medal of Freedom recipient who directed several space missions, including the treacherous yet successful Apollo 13 voyage. I had the wonder, wonderful opportunity of speaking to Gene Kranz a few years ago for a documentary I was making on this mission when he said to me a few words I'll never forget. He was recounting how he felt on learning that the three astronauts on the Apollo 13 spacecraft were stranded in space and how he was able to overcome the obstacles of the fateful expedition. Then he said to me, Values are the things you fall back on when times are tough, when you have to make difficult decisions, when you don't feel you have an answer or a way out. Values are the things that give you hope. There is a great deal of truth in these words. Values empower you to have will, to have grace, to have str strength, to have love. Values entail, entail so much character and personality in each of us that if everyone here today listed them on a sheet of paper, you would truly get to know that individual on a personal level. Gene Kranz was right. 
Values are all you have to depend on when you are alone and will forever connect you with your family and serve as a source of hope in the face of adversity, just as it did for him. So I ask all of you to keep three strong virtues with you and let them guide you through your journey to college, to your careers and beyond. Firstly, have compassion and let it help you love and treat others with kindness and respect. Have determination and finish everything you start with dignity and pride. Most of all, have aspirations so that it, you, they may guide you to success using intellect in all that you do. In this society filled with financial hoarders and dishonest people, the ones who hold their compassion, determinations, and aspirations dear evoke positive change in this world. Let these three values emanate from everything you do. Ultimately, your success in life depends on your fundamental beliefs and the way you choose to present yourself to the world. I only ask that you present yourself to the world impressively with the grounded faith in these virtues. I want to thank the West Hills staff, guidance counselors, and teachers who made these four years an incredible experience. Mr. Roberts and Ms. Figluzzi, you have truly helped us every step of the way over the past few years. I also want to thank Mr. Pereira and Ms. O'Neill, your incredible class advisors and have done so much for us seniors. Thank you to my parents and sister. I am valedictorian today because of your unyielding support. To the graduating seniors, I hope you remember the words of Eugene Kranz and are inspired to maintain your values with you throughout your lives. I wish you success in all of your future endeavors. Congratulations, class of 2011. We made it. Thank you, Annika. Now a message from Board of Education President, Dr. Polly Rowe. I bring you both greetings and congratulations from the entire Board of Education. We're very, very proud of you. And I'm particularly proud of at least 20% of you who started your educational career across the street with me 13 years ago. Um, you were kindergarten, first and second graders at Roxbury when I was there. And that's makes it very, very special to be here. Um, in fact, 30 years ago to date, the exact date, I sat over in the stands as a parent when it began to pour rain. My daughter was graduating from West Hill and Senator Blumenthal kept talking and talking and talking and then came the lightning and the thunder so I'm hoping it will be very different today. Um, I'll try to be briefer than I had planned. Um, this is a day for you to look back on all that you've achieved and a day to look forward to meeting new challenges. Your teachers and you have spent long, hard, caring hours and days and years sometimes accomplishing, sometimes disappointing, working and helping each to develop to your full potential. To achieve life at its fullest, you must give your best efforts. If you only give the minimum you want into learning and whatever you undertake, you will receive only minimum in return. When you work to your full capacity, you can hope to attain the knowledge and skills that will enable you to create your future and control your destiny. To the families and staff, there are only two lasting bequests that we can give our children. One is roots and the other is wings. Roots mean giving a person a sense of belonging and a sense of who he or she is. Wings means giving that person 
the confidence to find and follow a path toward his or her fulfillment. Even with the strong abilities, your parents' best example and your teachers' best efforts, in the end, it is your work that will determine how much and how well you have learned. Moving up or graduating is but one of the early steps that you will take in life. Remember the, and I'm sure the Roxbury graduates will groan, the road to success is always under construction. Um, as you prepare for tomorrow, I want to uh, give you an answer on are you prepared by sharing with you a message that I received from one of my teachers. Remember the, mo the modern fable of Dumbo, the baby circus elephant. You will recall that Dumbo had a marvelous natural gift. He could fly. In the beginning, however, he didn't know he could fly. His ability was due to his large ears, which could serve as wings. But since such big ears were not the usual case among elephants, Dumbo for some time was ridiculed by all the other elephants. This continual put down was devastating to Dumbo. He considered himself a failure as an elephant until he was befriended by a mouse who spotted Dumbo's natural talent. Not because Dumbo was afraid to try much of anything on his own, but the mouse first had to convince him to use his ears as wings. So the mouse gave Dumbo a feather, a magic feather, that he told him would enable him to fly. Dumbo trusted his friend, so he believed in the feather. With the feather, he began to fly and win great praise from all who watched him. One day, to his horror, Dumbo dropped the feather in mid-flight. As he fell, he heard his friend call out, you don't need the feather, you can fly. Dumbo tried and he flew. At last he believed in himself. This fable, I believe, tells something important about where you are. You are ready to spread your wings and conquer many things. May today and all of your days be very special. Our hopes for you are high, our feelings very warm, and our good wishes endless. Thank you, Dr. Rao. I'd like to welcome the Honorable Mayor Michael Pavia to address the graduating class. Thank you and greetings everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm very proud of all of you for getting to where we are today. I am going to be brief, uh, but there's a message that I hope you'll take away from this today and that is high school, fondest memories. You've gotten through four years of high school, you were in a comfort zone, you had your friends and your family and your teachers and your administrators, all of whom I wish to congratulate as well today. And now you're looking into a transition in your life. Today you realize that this is the beginning of that transition in your life. And you're moving away from the comfort zone and you're moving away from your friends and you're moving away from, fami from your familiar surroundings to what your future has in store for you. So ladies and gentlemen and graduates of West Hill, your life is now facing a wide open door. And after today, you'll be looking through that door with curiosity and apprehension. And I know that some of you will be looking through that door with uncertainty, with a sense of anxiety, with some fear, but don't be troubled and don't be afraid. As you look through that doorway, always remember who you are and where you came from. 
step through that door with encouragement and commitment, knowing who you are and where you came from. Take confidence in the wonderful education that your parents and your teachers and the administrators have given you in West Hill High School. And now, accept the fact that you have the tools to win in life. And as you walk through that door, know what you're bringing into the world. As you walk through that door, be happy. Be very excited, not about this wonderful moment which you won't, will never forget in your lives, but more importantly, about the world that you're entering and what you're bringing into that world. Always remember that the most important discovery is not within the intricacies of science or the complexities of mathematics or in the brilliance of art, but rather the most important discovery that you can make and you will make is who you are, the gifts you have to offer, and where your passion lies. When you embrace who you are and the gifts you have, wherever your passion lies, whether it's teaching, medicine, business, or public service, you will succeed and your life will be en enriched by the deepest gratification imaginable. Graduating class of West Hill 2011, I compliment you, I wish you well in your future endeavors, and the city of Stanford is certainly proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pavia. Senior class administrator, Reginald Roberts, has one last thing to say to the graduating class. <laughs> We made it. In, in 2007, when we came here, I asked two freshmen, Ebony Parrott and Michael Maziars, I said, we're opening the freshman building. Can you cut the ribbon? And this is the ribbon. I've kept it for years. And when I was holding it this morning, I was thinking about a story about two young men and a wise old man. And the young man said, what we're going to ask this man is, we have a bird in our hands, and we're going to see how wise he is. We're going to ask him, is it alive? And if he says, it's alive, we're going to kill it, and he'll be wrong. But if he says, it's dead, we're going to let our hands free and let the bird fly free. Either way, he'll be wrong. So they went to the man and they said to him, if you know so much, tell us the truth. Is it dead? Is it alive? He said, I know one thing. It's in your hands. So what I say to you seniors, wherever you go in life, have courage because it's in your hands. Live out, live out your imaginations. Don't live with regret. Wherever you go, make sure you leave the place better than when you came because class of 2011, it's in your hands. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Um, we have uh, our next speaker is Ms. Beth Ber Merkin. I'm sorry. Uh, she was a graduate of West Hill in 1977. She's a dedicated, pub dedicated public defender who does not shy away from some of the more difficult and complex cases involving the indigent. Her office requires a dedication to the central tenets of our legal system, and we are proud to have her at West Hill today to share her insights for our, grad our newly graduating and hopefully registered to vote, young citizens. Thank you, thank you. It's really exciting to be here and I want to congratulate everybody who's graduating here, the class of 2011. I can't believe that it's been 34 years that I was sitting right where you guys are sitting, feeling excited and scared and proud and nervous, happy, sad, uh, all at the same time. I was sad to move away from West Hill, the friends that I had grown so attached to, yet I was excited to take the next step in life. 
I was scared to leave the comforts of West Hill and its familiarity, and yet I was nervous not knowing what was going to come next. And now that I stand here as a parent of two high school kids, I also know that all of the parents out there are feeling these same emotions, pride, fear, worry about what comes next. You may or may not know this, but I know your principal, Camille, not from any connection to West Hill, but from the sidelines of the soccer field.